morning once again to His Presence Ministries International um, online service. Praise the Lord. This is another day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, we are going to have a hallelujah time in the presence of the living God. So we welcome you to His Presence Ministries and we all know our vision. Let's say it together wherever you are, restoring lives, raising champions, transforming families, communities, cities, and nations. That is one powerful vision that the Lord gave to us. The Word of God says that in Exodus 33 verse 14, the Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So the presence of the Lord will be with us and he will indeed give us rest. Praise the Lord. Word of God again says in the book of um, 2 Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, where Solomon asked for wisdom and it was granted to him. In this season, we want to continuously pray for wisdom. We want to pray that God gives us wisdom. Wisdom for us, uh, wisdom um, for knowledge and insight that we may be able um, to, to, to know what God is saying in this season and what men are saying, to be able to tell the difference with what men are saying and what God is saying. We want to pray for us Christians that we may, we may be able to have um, insight um, of what God is saying in this season where others are saying there's a casting down, we are saying there's a rising up in the name of Jesus. So please join me in prayer as we pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Yet another day you've given us, my God, a day where we are going to celebrate, a day where we are going to rejoice your goodness, a day, Lord, that we are so grateful of, we are so thankful, Lord. We thank you, my God. We thank you for your amazing love, O King of Kings. We thank you for your word in Exodus 33, verse 14, that your presence will go with us and you will give us rest. We want to thank you, my God, for Psalms 118, verse 17, that God, we shall not die, but we shall live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord mm -hmm. in the land of the living. So, Lord, we want to thank you that there shall be no premature death in this season. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray, God, that no weapon fashioned against us mm -hmm. shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray, God, and thank you for continuously protecting us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and all the honor. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. So we want to thank God. Um, our first Sunday, Apostle Petunia Chiriseri taught us, um, shared with us how to lock into the presence of the Lord. And the second time, she was telling us about teaching us about signs of the end times. It was very clear, very insightful, the things that she was teaching us. Things she, she was unfolding the word of the things that are happening and right before our eyes, where we are seeing the scriptures being fulfilled in, in before our very eyes. So um, this week is another powerful Sunday where again we shall um, be taught of the word, we shall be taught um, from the word of the living God. So um, even if our giving, do not forget to give this morning. Uh, the bill code is there on your screen. Give to the Lord. And the word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. And we want to thank God because he remains a faithful God. So right now, join, join me as we get into a time of praise. We want to praise the Lord. We want to worship the Lord. We want to just give our heart to the Lord. And as we prepare to hear the word of God from our very own apostle, Apostle Petunia Chiriseri from His Presence Ministries International. So wherever you are, just write to your feet in this book of the word of the Lord. Let's just lift our hands in a sign of surrender unto the King of Kings, unto the Lord of Kings. There's none like Him. So Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Father God, and we come before your holy throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we declare that you are holy above all. We remove to whenever I come here, Heavenly Father. We just ask for the God that you may come into our midst, Father God. Father God, we just ask for the God that you may touch our hearts, Heavenly Father. We ask that you may change our hearts, Father God. We ask that you may purify our hearts. And Father God, we don't take for God everything that you do in our lives. Father God, we just love you and we thank you, Father God, in our lives. Because we know that you
light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are the way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are God, all the praise and all the glory because indeed he is the way maker he's the promise keeper that is who he is so if you to continue to strengthen and to deepen our worship and our relationship with him let us realize that what we are facing is a wake up call so even as I get to the fourth focus of a teaching on the end time, a teaching on signs of the end times, which we started last week, today I'd like to focus on the fourth focus, which are my, I guess my concerns. As I've been saying, people have been asking, what is God saying? Pastor, what do you think? What is your opinion? So I just want to speak into that, again, from a biblical perspective. My concerns on the vaccine. And I'll quickly just go through that. But I will repeat what we ought to be doing as Christians, therefore. So the first concern, as we have been reading in the media, is that every vaccine concern, every vaccine carries an antigen. It actually carries the disease particles, in this case the virus. So for some people with like the elderly or with a reduced immune system, my concern is that some people may die from receiving the vaccine if people have already underlying medical problems. So the concern is what man has the right to take another man's life? The second concern which we taught last week is that the vaccine not only contains the antigen which seeks to promote antibody production in our own body and for healthy bodies that should kick in naturally and we survive the vaccine but my second concern is that the vaccine contains a nanochip that they're calling the quantum dot tattoo and it's an invisible tattoo. It's called an intelligent tattoo on the right hand. And um, we discussed that in the in the last in the last teaching that it comes as a convenience and it will be embraced. Also, because of the 5G technology, maybe if I can just quickly go through what we went through in the, in, the, in, in, in the first day on our teaching on the signs of the end times. One of the things is the incoming new world order, which seeks to establish one religion, one economy, and one government, but the one world ruler being Lucifer. But it will all be sugar coated as unity, peace. When the Bible says, when you hear them saying, peace, peace, know that the end is nigh. And the ultimate is control. And so this vaccine contains this nanochip that can manipulate the mind and the life of every individual that has it through artificial intelligence without that person even realizing that they're under the control of what's on the internet, Lucifer. 
when Jesus is, is the world ruler. So the word speaks also very clearly against any implants in your right hand or on your forehead as it leads to the mark of the beast. My third concern is, well, it is rumored that this vaccine will be um, mandatory. And so again, as a pastor, I'm concerned why people would need to be forced like sheep being led to the slaughter. Whatever happened to basic fundamental human rights and freedoms, the freedom of choice. The sugar coating here um, is for making it mandatory is so that we can be able to tell whether you have been vaccinated, whether you have been vaccinated and whether you are safe and uh, you are therefore free to live a normal life again, allowed to do business with everybody or whether you will infect us. And so who knows how far this social distancing mm -hmm concept will go. Maybe, this is just me, those that refuse to take the vaccine, that's how we will be isolated because we will then be said or accused of infecting others. So it can take a deeper twist, a sinister twist, and um, it may divide families and nations even as we read in Matthew chapter 24 last week how brother will deliver brother for persecution and so on. My fourth concern, uh, like with all Luciferian agendas, is that the nanochip may be blindly embraced because of the benefits without the rest of the story being told. You know, but in the process, we will lose, people will lose most of their basic fundamental rights. Right to freedom of choice, for example, that is the first freedom that God gave every human being. God gave Adam and Eve the power of choice right from the beginning. That's how Eve chose to eat the forbidden fruit. And But God has always given every, has always given humanity the power of choice. That's how even today, he does not force us even to receive his son, Jesus Christ. He still gives us the choice. And so that right of the freedom of choice will be violated. People will lose their, may lose their rights and their freedom of movement, their right to privacy, because the nanochip and with the 5G technology that we talked about, which I may need to repeat for those that were not there last uh, uh, teaching, is how will this new world order be established? It will be established, um, like I said, through sugar-coated and very well-meaning, well-sounding concepts like unity, peace, but which really is controlled by the one world ruler who is Lucifer or the Antichrist who will uh, uh, put the mark of the beast on people that he intends to take to hell with him. And uh, that mark of the beast, it is such that without it, one cannot buy or sell. And we read about that and you can still read about that Revelation 13, 16 to 18. Let's start from verse 15 to 18. And those that refuse, Revelation 13, 15 talks about how they will be beheaded. Hmm. I'll talk about that as a concern too. So how will this one world religion, economy and government be established? Through a, a digital identity, ID2020, which is a nanochip under the skin, which all of us, as we hear and know, and read from the scriptures would reject but the devil masquerades as an angel of light and this is what this whole coronavirus scheme is all about it is actually according to 
fan tits that are coming out from the called the conspiracies or, or whatever but if we join the dots they're all saying the same thing that basically it's one of the biggest cover-ups for technological side effects that has ever happened where the development of technology such that the introduction of the 5G high frequency radiation is the one that's giving rise to the COVID-19 deaths and uh, the I don't know whether you can call it a coincidence that it was uh, set up first in uh, the pilot projects were in Wuhan, in China, and in Italy, and uh, that's where the highest death rates are. And um, why the high frequency radiations? Because they're high speed, and so they're faster, they're effective. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a convenient uh, broadband internet. They call it the fifth generation internet. And of course, it makes life look like it's becoming easier. And that's how, that's where the deception is. That's how it is being embraced. But it is at a very high cost, cost of many deaths. As we speak, 11,000 plus in Italy of the elderly. The second strategy for people to access it, we discussed it last week, is because of the lockdown and all the things we've been told to do, wash your hands, sanitize your hands, keep, keep, and so on and so on. You know, everybody is just tense and uh, it's interesting though, I find that people are quick to obey anything that they're told by, you don't know who. <laughs> but when the Bible says, repent and be baptized, Turn away from your wicked ways. <laughs> and the Bible is the manual for life from the very creator, Jehovah Elohim himself, our eternal creator. No, we don't obey. When God says, fellowship with me, when the, when the Bible says, the manual for life, when he says, do not forsake the assembling together of the saints. For example, now, no one, absolutely no one has any excuse for not taking in the word of the Lord. Mm. No one is too busy. No one has no bus fare. Mm. Do you know? So the money you'd have used for your bus fares or for your fuel, buy data. Yes. Listen to the word of the Lord and reach yourself. Mm. Because if you can find data for movies and for all sorts of video clips that you're listening to, surely you ought to know as a child of the Most High God, prioritize the word of the Lord mm. because the word is life-giving. Amen. And so the word also takes away or diffuses the second strategy, which is fear. Fear of the unknown. What's going to happen to us? Am I going to die? What's going to... And so on. And so using the 5G and the fear, that's how... The ID 2020 is going to be taken in because the vaccine, which is what I'm talking about, my concern about the vaccine, that's how it's going to be embraced. But what we don't get told, which is what is circulating in the media, is that this nanochip that will be on your right hand will be such that you can be tracked, your activities will be monitored, are being monitored, in fact, as we speak, even under the 4G or the 3G, you know, it is, you are manipulatable. They, they say you are internet enabled, you are an internet enabled man or person. You know, it's cool, you know, you are tech literate. And um, I was hearing, I don't know how uh, authentic this is, but 2,600 Swedes already have the microchips in place on their right hand for train tickets because now they don't have to be buying train tickets their uh, digital id on their right hand you know just help them to clock in and it really looks cool mm. but it's a concern because the rest of the story may not be being taught and that's cause for concern my fifth concern is from revelation 13 verse 16 to 17, that those who refuse will lose their right to fundamental basic 
uh, rights, like the right to food, the right to buy and to sell, because you don't have the chip implant, because you will be said to be unsafe to communicate with, and maybe, who knows, maybe we will not even be allowed to have free movement. Mm -hmm. It's like right now for me to go to certain countries, I need a vaccination against this, and I need vaccination against this, in West Africa or whatever. And so it's cause for concern because the rest of the dangers, thousands will continue to die. And whether it's true or not, and if it is true, I believe it really cannot be of God. Mm -hmm that there's talk that 15% of the population must be gotten rid of, especially the elderly and those that are weak because they have mm -hmm. immune deficiencies of one sort or another. God is the giver of life. Mm -hmm. God is the author of life. And um, I don't think man, no man has the right to take away another. And so that is cause for concern. Revelation 13, 16 says, and he causeth all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. My sixth concern is that the new world order through internet will take control of the minds of people and of the lives of people because the beast is a system, it's not a person which uses artificial intelligence where the internet is as we use it right now it's gathering all the information about you right now it's being used for marketing purposes and you always get pop-ups about scholarships if you want googles and scholarships and uh, so you know, basically artificial intelligence starts to feed you with what you want. So right now it looks cool, it looks good, it looks very useful. And, um, but depending on who controls the system, my concern is that in the future, um, with all our lives being online, so to speak, AI... Uh, tracking where you go, your activities, what you have clicked on, what you do, what you buy, your communications, your interests, your activities. It's just me. And God forbid. But if it should take a turn, a turn, and uh, that ruler who will be in control starts to feed you with what that ruler wants. For example, Amos 8, verse 12, says, They shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. Mm. What if the one world ruler just decides no more Bible, mm. no more Christian stuff, and all that is taken out? So my advocacy over the years has always been buy hard copy mm. Bibles. Don't just depend on electronic Bible. As we speak, I think some of us Christians may have heard that the new NIV, electronic one, so many, I can't quote the number of verses, have actually been removed from the digital version. So buy Many Bibles. Mm. Don't just buy one Bible. This is not the time to be stingy with your money. Mm. This is the time to know to invest into your eternity. Buy many Bibles. I believe in God, you know, to have lots of money and I buy a whole storeroom of Bibles. Not just for converts in my church, but for my children's mm. children and my children's children's children. That will be my gift eternal gift to them because as long as they're depending on uh, electronic bibles and so on amos 8 verse 12 may come upon us where there are no more bibles there's no more music that's christian or anything that's christian mm. um, depending on who controls it 
and as the Antichrist system um, advances, as you know, already in certain countries, Christians have been charged for preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's called proselytization. And uh, Christians have been charged for preaching the gospel of Christ and um, have been charged with offenses like it's discriminatory, it's imposing one's religion, it's bigotry, it's judgmental, it's backwards. This is not uh, adding towards sustainable development. Uh, these are, these are uh, uh, religious attitudes that promote hate speech, homophobia, etc, etc. So you can imagine if all that is now what artificial intelligence is dishing out. Our lives will be totally controlled. And uh, my last but one content, uh, concern is that um, is that which is found in this scripture, I must read it for you. That again, as the Antichrist system advances, people will be beheaded for their faith, for refusing to have the nano plant, in, uh, 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 nano chip implant. Revelation 20 verse 4 tells us, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto the people. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ, for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. So, death sentences for those that uh, refuse to take the nano chip is cause for concern. And the last concern, the tenth concern, is uh, that the, the vaccine contains the microchip which is talked about so many times in many places that I've read in the Bible, which eventually gives the Antichrist total power and authority to control people till they are led to the hellfire and brimstone, uh, which again we read about in Revelation chapter 20, but in Isaiah 5 verse 14, therefore hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and with their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So, those are my concerns about the vaccine that it's not pure in its motives, it will soon. And unfortunately, many do not know. So as I close, I repeat, what should we be doing? My focus five was, what should we be doing? We should be building ourselves up in our most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Develop your spiritual life. Because as you develop your spiritual relationship with God most high through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. The life of God is infused into your life. Mm. And the blood of Jesus that washes away your sins is the blood that also makes you his own mm. and he takes care of his own. Mm. So you must continually declare scriptures. Mm. Psalm 23, Psalm 91. Why? I shared this in the last uh, 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 teaching that because when the angels of the Most High God hear the word of the Lord, they do his bidding. Mm. They obey the voice of the Lord. So that's why we must pray with understanding to dispel this fear which will cause us to embrace the vaccine with the many things that it carries. And so in closing, I want to declare this uh, 
prophetically. Psalm 121, and prophetically upon your life. Declare this also upon your life. This is David praying. Make this your prayer. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from me. From whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He will not let my foot be moved. And he that keepeth Israel will not slumber. The keeper of Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. And verse 4 says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon thy right hand. Listen to this. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. And that is a coincidence. And verse 6, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He will preserve your soul. Mm. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Mm. So fear him who can keep you from all evil. Mm. In this today, and in the hereafter, in the life after. Fear him. Read his word. Take time to build your spiritual relationship. We build so many other relationships, even with the internet. Build. Take this time during this lockdown season to read your word. How do you read the word of the Lord? Pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you because the Bible is the voice of God. God speaks to us as you can see. God strengthens us. He equips us. And not just for ourselves, but for our families and our friends and for the world over. Let every Christian flood the internet while we still can with the word of the Lord that will bring healing and help to his people. Peace, strength, and joy forever. You may say to me, how do I know there is a hell? Because I've heard some people say, hell in you, you never found this. In English, it simply means it's a scarecrow that pastors use to wave people to their churches. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how I answer you? It's very simple. You know, death is happening. I'm not saying you'll die from the pandemic, but we know 100 years from now, we'll, none of us, none of us will still be in existence. Mm. You and I will have died. So it's not so much the death that is a sad thing. It is where you are going mm. to which destiny. And that destiny is determined by you now. So receive the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I repeat, he is the only way, the truth, mm. and the life. And when he comes into your life, he gives you peace. So I'm enjoying a life of peace right now. You too, you can enjoy a life of peace. In today's life and in the hereafter. So heads I win, tails the devil loses, mm. the antichrist loses. Mm. So you make sure that you remain a winner because in all these things, the Bible tells me we are more than conquerors. Mm. God bless you.
So join us again at 5 p.m. for our special Easter service. Don't miss that one. It's a service not to be missed. So see you again at 5 p.m. Oh, you love me too much. You love me too much. Oh.